Hello everyone and welcome to KDH Art Class. Today we're going to be doing a two-dimensional project that talks about paper quilling. Okay, here's are my examples. And this video is designed for those students that do not have the scissors and glue and the colored papers at home to create the quilling project. So this is paper quilling. This is where you take paper and you bend it or you roll it around and you glue it onto your surface. So this would be kind of an advanced one. This one uh, I didn't do as much on and it's uh, more of like a little intermediate that we can come back in and color. And of course my beginners we're practicing the different ways of bending the paper and attaching it, so it's kind of like a roller coaster. Anyways, this is for those students that don't have the materials, but they still need to send something into their to their teachers to get credit. So I actually have two papers that I'm going to be doing at pretty much the same time. This is for my beginners. If you're just starting out, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, this is where your world's going to be. My intermediate and advanced students, this is where you're going to be and uh, you're basically going to need paper, pencil, and something to color with, whether it's crayons, colored pencils, markers, whatever you have around the house to do it. Now, of course, I'm going to switch to marker. You're gonna use your pencil so that you can erase any mistakes that you have along the way. Or if you wanna be brave and go all out, you can use a marker or a crayon to draw with. Uh, the difference is if you do something that you do not like, you're going to have to make that part of your artwork. We do not call them mistakes. We call them happy accidents that teach us a new way of doing something. All right, for my beginners, we're going to start off with a simple shape. Okay, and we're actually going to do three shapes, the same shape over and over again. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Let me think about this. All right, I'm going to start near the bottom. And I'm going to make another dot down at the bottom. This shape is symmetrical. It's going to be the same on both sides. I'm going to make the letter C. And it's going to come down to that dot. So it's kind of like a C, but it's kind of bent a little bit. All right. Then the other side, I'm going to make that same sheet, C shape going the other way. Uh oh, I missed my dot. That's okay. You can connect. Right. And it's not perfect, but yes, it's a heart. From there, I'm going to do another shape on top. And I'm going to do it by making the letter V, as in very, very, very Valentine looking. <laughs> I don't know, making this up as I go. And then I'm going to put a dot a little further away that's in line with the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and connect to the dots. to the shapes as much as possible. So we made like a little Rama's little star there. Diamond, not star. You can tell it's it's a tiring kind of day. A beautiful day for a nap or being outside. Sleeping in a hammock. Yes. And then I'm going to let you pick whatever shape you want to put on top. So I might even do a square. 
Ooh, or a triangle. Oh, put my little dot there. And connect. But these are just the outlines. We're going to fill them in just like we did with the twilling project with all kinds of swirling and twirling lines. All right, advanced students, instead of doing simple shapes, you're going to do letters. So the, the one word, it seems to go really well with everything, of course, is love. But you can do, you can do your name if you know how to do block letters. If you're just learning how to do block letters, follow along. So for the letter L, I did a really big L shape and I'm adding these short lines. That's going to be how thick it is. And then I'm going to follow it down till I'm about lined up and then come over and then connect it either way I need to. There's your L. Now block letter O's are very simple because you're just doing a circle and a smaller circle, so like a donut. The letter V starts off like a normal letter V, but it has a bottom to it and then it comes back up figure out how wide it's going to be and then you put a smaller V right there at the top now the last one is an E so you're just going to do kind of a rainbow shape Add a diagonal line, not all the way, and you're going to do like a U, notice it's a little bit shorter. I'm going to go ahead and add my width, how thick is it going to be, and a bigger U, Whoop, don't move paper, around. And the last thing I need is figure out how thick it's going to be. And I'm going to put that little eyeball in it. I always call it the eyeball. I always see the letter E as a smiling face. Okay, so here we're starting. Now it's time for our colors. And again, you could use markers, crayons, colored pencils, whatever you would like to use. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a few out of my bucket here. By the way, guys, I've so gotten into loving highlighters. They're so fun. What colors have I got here? Oh, just grab a few. I'm going to make these up as I go along. Which ones would you be able to see on my machine? Alright, so. Again, you can do it with crayons. You can do it with markers. Now, let's look at what the beginners did with the quilling. They did their three-dimensional lines. Now, we've been studying lines this first nine weeks. We have diagonal lines, curvy lines, kind of rainbowy lines, zigzag lines. My lighting is really interesting here. Spiral lines. Well, you're not going to see that one. You can see the pink one a little bit better. Spiral lines. Crazy lines that go in all kinds of directions. So it's all kinds of lines filling up their paper. The more advanced ones took those lines and created it with their paper. And these little flowers are spirals that you cut the tops of and then you squish them out to make the stuff. You can watch uh, one of my uh, quilling videos on KDH Art Class. 
I remember it's on YouTube and it will talk about how you can make these but this we're using for ideas and then you can just really fill up your page with all kinds of lines okay now here's the catch your lines I want you to really fill in the area and think of a piece of paper. For example, we could do the spiral line, little circle that gets bigger and bigger and bigger because we saw that with the paper and then glue it to itself so it can be a little spiral. We can fold the paper back and forth like a fan. There's our zigzag line. Yeah. Oh, that looks like fun. I think I'm going to do that a couple more times. Zigzag, folding back and forth. You can envision it in your brain. Yeah. Folding back and forth like a fan. Oh, messed up. Right. Adding some zigzag lines. Right. So the same thing over here. Now with letters, I like to use a little bit of it as a decoration. Right. Kind of like I did on the heart shape. I just kind of used it to decorate this little one corner. I would fill it in more. This was an incomplete project on scrap paper that already had other things glued to it but you know I recycle reduce reuse and recycle and then you can see that you can zigzag folding like a fan fold the paper and gluing it on to your letters making like little flower shapes so here's some different ways of doing it okay right. then you have the curved lines now we could do like this yellow one that's curved like a rainbow and imagine if you did it all the way down the side of your paper so it's sticking out how fun would that be i can even do it on this side rainbow line rainbow line because remember you have to glue it on rainbow line and you could even add it as an accent along your edge here make it like a little frilly edge imagine it falling off the or sticking up above the paper i'm demonstrating that by going off of the letter l a little bit now my advanced students you could come in and show the thickness of it by kind of tracing it again right. so showing thickness just understanding how we would add the lines Then going back to the paper quilling ideas, you have kind of this pretzely knot where it's a loopy line that comes around. As you know, we practice those loopy lines, filling it in. So there's loopy. And you could do several of them, or you can just do a bunch of one little loops everywhere. Filling it in. Okay. Same thing over here. You could be filling it in. And of course, showing the thickness. So this is going to be a very textural kind of project when you do it with paper.
And then we're just trying to show that we understand a little bit about this. All right. Then, of course, we have what looks like that letter S, but super fancy, twirling around and around. Here it is right here. And that's a fun one, or you go around and around like a spiral, then go the other direction and start big and get smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's two spirals. I'll show that again. Little, bigger, and come down. Then go the other way. Big, smaller, smaller, and smaller. Now you could also do the spiral that comes out and spirals back the other way. And if you're really talented, you could even figure it out upside down. Oh, I got lucky on that one. Just to make things more interesting. And then over here, same idea. Maybe you're just going to add a bunch of them around and around. Again, kind of like the letter S, just filling it in as you go along. I fully expect you to be doing this on your own. And then you have kind of the neat geometric, whichever direction it wants to go, kind of like this one. It also looks like an S, but it's almost like two squares, okay? Or the zigzag that kind of, oh, you can see my cereal box there. This blue little zigzaggy one. Kind of going up and down and up and down. Or even like this red one. It's like a giant square. So at this point, you're going to be adding however many different paper twisted bent curled lines zigzag lines that you can think of so again you can make your zigzags and they could be coming off your paper you could even do like a square that gets bigger and bigger just by folding your paper. Mm -hmm. uh, you, could, you could even do like those castle lines if you folded your paper a lot. Like squares. Trying to keep my marker out of the way. Mm -hmm. And Again, adding all kinds of, you know, I love my spirals when I was doing that. And you can even make your spirals like more oval shape and end it with a little point. That's how I was able to make these uh, teardrop shapes for my flower petals. You might be able to see those pink ones pretty good in there. They go round and round and then you squish them. So you could be adding all kinds of shapes. Little spirally lines. Maybe I want some of these spirals to go off my paper in the other direction. Some smaller ones, some bigger ones etc 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 I want you to have fun making all of this crazy fun lines I wish you had the scissors and the glue
to actually bend the paper and create these artworks. But you can still use your imagination and be thinking about how else could I do this even if I don't have it. Well, I'm hoping you're enjoying this lesson. And I can't wait to see how you completely filled your paper. Don't forget the other letters. Have fun creating. And we'll see you next time. Bye.